made copies enough for one for each family. And um, we're just going to go straight through that. And so you know what expectations are for the trip and go through the itinerary and then, like I said, answer any questions. Um, I do have a list of, this has probably been my biggest sticking point with well, our biggest sticking point with putting together the trip is I have a balance due of folks who still owe money on the trip and then I have nine students who have not turned in the code of conduct, 18 students who have not turned in their medical form. And this, this is a bit of a problem for us because uh, the medical forms are supposed to be turned over to our school nurse two weeks ago for review and I still have not done that. And so if your name is on my list or if you've logged into Charms or I've been hunting you down, I need I've got, I have to have it tomorrow. And I know I sent out that a kind of a, a aggressive email on Wednesday that said if you don't turn it in by Wednesday, you're not going on the trip. But folks, this is it's super important. Um, I know Mr. Lydic is going to come around, the, the folks who um, have some forms to turn back to give those back to you. But the, the biggest thing that we're missing on those, I hand them back to students, is a uh, date of your uh, tetanus shot, and we're missing copies of the insurance card. If you need to turn in a copy of the insurance card tonight, uh, Mrs. English is going to help you do that, and we'll shoot a photocopy of that right away. But I, I can't stress enough how important that is that we have those. Uh, we can't roll next week without 100% um, attendance on the medical forms and the code of conduct. It's super important. So please help me out and uh, let me get some sleep at night. I've been stressing about that. Okay, first page in the handbook. And I don't know if you need that. We're going to forego it. You'll win. Uh, just talks a little bit about uh, what the trip is all about. You'll see information about our hotel. We are in two different hotels. Uh, we're in the, both the Drury Inn, but one in Nashville and then one in Mississippi. And yes, for the same price, we're taking the students to an additional state. You are welcome. Good, for, good deal for your money. We're going to Mississippi. It's on the other side of the river. So there, there's the information for the hotel and the information um, for our bus company. Um, for, uh, cell phone numbers for all three of us are listed right there in case you need to call us. Um, uh, there's really not a need unless you're super worried to call us at 3 o'clock in the morning or you just want to see if we're, if we're awake. If you can do that, you can text us and that'll be all exciting. Uh, that's how to get a hold of us. Next page, Nashville fun facts. Um, it's kind of cool. If you think about the history of Nashville, it's almost as interesting as the history of New Orleans and uh, the development of music in the United States. There's so many cool things. For you Elvis Presley fans, Heartbreak Hotel, 1956. So take a look at some of that. The links under Nashville links are all places we're going to be visiting. You can type those in your browser and take a look at some of the different things we're going to see and where we're going to go. It's awfully cool. Uh, the next few things we'll, we'll read right through directly and, um, and go right through that. Expectations for conduct. We're very proud of the tradition and excellence in the Smoky Valley High School Music Department. It goes without saying that our expectations for conduct and behavior are extremely high. The directors and chaperones are under a great deal of pressure in being responsible for each student traveling with the group as well as making all travel arrangements, making sure they're all complete. And all necessary equipment and instruments are packed and loaded. As you know, the actions of each individual are a direct reflection on the entire group. Students and parents should be aware that this, since this is a school-sponsored activity, all school policies and rules regarding behavior and conduct are in effect. Please read the following guidelines and memorize them. Our desire is to make the trip as enjoyable and pleasurable as possible for everyone involved while maintaining a high standard of character and professionalism. I can't stress enough the importance of behavior on the trip, ladies and gentlemen. And the next two pages Mr. Lydic is going to go through with you, um, but the handbook has been approved by, this, uh, by our administration and includes everything that comes straight from the student handbook. And so there are all of the policies and regulations for USD 400 and they remain in effect. Mr. Lydic? Um, most of the code of conduct things, or the things on these next two pages are listed in the code of conduct. I guess there's eight people that maybe haven't gotten to those yet, but I'm not going to take the time to read those. I just want to um, highlight some things. Uh, first of all, with it, probably the biggest one for young kids is inappropriate language. Um, you'll be standing there and you won't know that somebody's around that, and how you talk with your friends is one way, but how you talk around adults or around people who don't know you is entirely different. And you'll say something and you don't realize somebody is nearby. Um, my favorite one was at the Slinem Mall. I was sitting in the kids section and two teenagers were having a conversation, none of my business, until the expletives started flying out and I'm you know, sitting in a little chair like this eating a pretzel with my daughter and it's like, okay, really? Go somewhere else and use that language. So pretty please, kids, you've got 
to watch your language because you never know who's, who's nearby and people will form opinions about us based on that. Um, I think tobacco, alcohol, and drugs and all that kind of stuff, I think students are aware that that's a big no-no. Do not do it. Um, vandalism of the hotel room um, is probably, and the bus, all those things are going to have to be paid for. So, and we know who's on what bus, we know what students are staying in what room. So expect, if we get a bill, we're gonna pass that bill on and you will be responsible for those, any damages and those kinds of things. And then probably number six is the scariest one. Um, and I don't think it's anything that we're gonna have a problem with, but students need to understand, um, if you break the law and get arrested because you've broken the law, you are on your own. You had better make sure that your one phone call is to your parents because they will be the ones who need to drive to Tennessee and get you out of jail. And we can laugh and giggle about it, but I'm dead serious. And kids, if you think your parents are upset when you break the rules here at home, just imagine how upset they're gonna be when they have 12 hours to think about it as they drive to Tennessee. They will be livid. Do not break the law. Seriously. And I'm not spending my trip going to the police station and trying to get you out of jail. I'll make sure you're at the police station and they have you in custody and I'll know where you are, but that's where I'm drawing the line. So pretty please, with sugar on top, do not break the law. It's very serious. Okay? Um, then continuing on, just some general rules there. Um, you know, if a director or a chaperone or somebody asks you to do it, there are going to be times when you're going to be tired on this trip and somebody says, hey, I need you to do this, and your first response is going to be, but I'm tired and I don't want to do that. You just got to smile. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Get it done. Okay? That's what we have to do. Be early for everything that we do. If we ask you to be downstairs for breakfast at 8 o'clock, you're there at 7.56 and you're ready to go, eat breakfast and be ready to go so that we don't have to hunt you down. If we need you on the bus at three o'clock, you're there at 2.55 so that you can make sure that you're on the bus. Um, and then this is another big one. We do not allow boys to be in girls' hotel rooms or girls to be in boys' hotel rooms. If you have friends who are of the opposite gender and you would like to hang out and chit chat, you may do so, but you must do so in the public spaces of the hotel. There'll be a light, uh, not a library, a lobby, not that fancy a hotel, a <laughs> lobby, um, you know, places like the swimming pool. Um, I, I don't know if we have a gym, um, but I would imagine that if the hotel, sometimes they have rules on how old you have to be to use the gym. So if they would allow students to use the gym, um, I suppose you could go in there, um, but you, yeah, I think that goes without saying why we want, um, why we think that's important, okay? Um, and then I'll let you read the consequences. Um, obviously, based on the severity of the offense, um, and honestly, the, if we have to continue to harp on the same thing with you, at some point, we're just going to have enough, and that's it, okay? Um, and if the, the behavior is severe enough, yes, we'll call home. See if that fixes it. If that doesn't fix it, maybe mom and dad need to come get you. And again, mom and dad are not going to be very happy after a 12-hour drive to come get you because you can't behave. Okay? Again, worst case scenario, I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I want everybody to be clear on it. Okay? And understand what we expect. All right. Uh, hotel and bus etiquette. Um, during daylight hours, you may sit with anyone you like on the bus. At night, especially that first night, we are sleeping on the bus on the way there. So girls will sit with girls and boys will sit with boys. Um, and for obvious reasons, um, try not to stand on the bus or if you do stand on the bus, do so um, when it is stopped. Um, there will be plenty of breaks. The drivers are required by law to stop every so many hours after so many hours of driving. We have to switch out drivers after so many hours of driving. Um, so there, if, there will be opportunities to do that. Um, whatever goes into the toilet on the bus rides around with us until we get back. So we will use the restroom in an emergency if we have to. But if we can avoid using the restroom, 
it makes that bus ride a whole lot more pleasant. Okay? So, um, and, and not trying to make light of that, we'll use it if we need to, um, but really seriously, if we can avoid it and time it with our stops, there'll be plenty of stops. So, honestly, it drives me crazy the number of stops because I'm not that kind of person when I travel. I get in, fill up the car, hold it until I need gas again. Get out, fill up, use the restroom, get in and go. So, um, drives me crazy how often we stop, but we'll have plenty of stops. Luckily, I'm not driving the bus. Okay, um, movies on the bus, G and PG only, no exceptions, no PG-13, none of that stuff, okay? Um, and this is a big one too. Um, we are guests at the hotel, but there are other guests at the hotel as well. Um, it's really easy um, to forget that there are other people who have spent a lot of money to stay at that hotel as well. And so being respectful of that, um, and just polite in the hotel to other people who are using the hotel. And then I think the biggest one is at night when it's time to go to bed. Um, go to bed and don't keep people in neighboring hotel rooms above or below or to the side awake because you guys are just having too good of a party, okay? So um, just take care of that. Um, lights out at appropriate times. Um, be in your room by your curfew. Um, and then you're not allowed to come out of your room um, after curfew until the next morning. Um, we'll have a time, this is the time that you can be out of your room and uh, we will meet you downstairs for breakfast. Everybody has to come eat breakfast every morning. We have to see your shining face and know that you're, that's how we're gonna know that you're okay, okay? God forbid you sleep and don't wake up or who knows what, you slip and fall in the shower and bump your head and you're sitting there in the shower. If we don't see you at breakfast, we know to come look for you, okay? That's how we know. That's why we do that. It's not because we're trying to force feed you muffins, okay? We just have to know that you're okay. Um, and we talked about the boys and girls. Telephones, room to room only, please. And that, again, be respectful. When that phone rings, um, they can probably hear it in neighboring rooms. So it's not like an all night phone ringing off the wall type thing. Uh, but if you need to meet your friends down in the lobby or something, that's totally fine. Um, no calls after lights are out. And uh, if you need to make long distance, do that on your cell phone. Or if you have a calling card or something like that, do not charge long distance phone calls to the hotel room. Okay? And um, while we're on it, um, I don't know. I, I've stayed in some really nice hotels with some fairly raunchy television choices. If you wouldn't watch it with your grandmother in the room, don't watch it. Change the channel, okay? And that's gonna be one of those things, parents, I can't be in every room at every moment. So talk to your kids about that. Tell them what you expect. Um, if I find out about it, we'll deal with it on the trip. Um, but I can't control what's on the TV any more than, than you can control what's on the TV um, when you're not around. So students are just gonna have to be respectful of that. Um, and then uh, we will take a one to two dollar contribution for the bus driver um, to tip them. They do really do a lot of work um, aside from just driving and getting us there safely, um, you know, making sure that they know where they're going, um, helping us load and unload stuff, keeping the bus clean, those kinds of things. So they're very, very important. So, um, any questions about what we expect as far as conduct or what the steps will take? Should conduct not be what we want it to be? Again, I think music students understand we travel quite a bit, not quite this far, but we go lots of places throughout the year, so I think they kind of know what we're doing. Um, just parents, help reinforce that with your students. Help them understand <coughs> that you know a 12-hour drive to Nashville is not really something you're hoping to do, okay? So thank you very much. Okay, packing hits. Um, Nashville, I got really nervous two weeks ago when Nashville was closed for two days. I mean, literally, the city closed down because of ice and snow. And then I was on the phone with the pastor today from the Lutheran Church we're performing at, and they got two inches of rain last night, it froze, and then five inches of snow overnight. And so Nashville is closed again today. Uh, I mean, literally, they're closed. Everything is just shut down. So. It's not much different than Kansas, so think ahead. We're probably not going to wear shorts unless you're going to have them in the hotel. Uh, but just plan ahead on luggage. I, I think I have it here. Bring a light jacket and bring a heavy coat because you may be chilly. You can bring one carry-on bag on the bus 
and one large piece of luggage underneath. So if you've got a backpack, it's got to be stored up top, and ladies, of course, you'll bring your purse, and it might be helpful if it actually fits in your backpack to make some extra room, but we want to have some room to breathe on the bus. Uh, of course, dress in layers. Uh, students will be issued a, a music department t-shirt next week. By the way, there are, there's probably about 45 students who have not submitted their t-shirt size. I'm happy to take that tonight and put it in the computer myself. If I don't get it from you tonight, I choose. And like I told Stephen Claus, I will choose opposite of what you actually do wear. Okay? <laughs> so it could be, um, yeah, compression shirt. Um, for the bus, be comfortable. Um, bring a pair of sweatpants for that nice 12 hour ride. Deodorant is fantastic. <laughs> personal hygiene, like Mr. Uh, Lydic mentioned with the bathroom, personal hygiene is of the utmost importance when it's you and uh, 41, 41 other people on the bus. Uh, it can be a little smelly. So please, please bring some extra clothes if you need to. Bring a pillow, blanket. We're going to be sleeping. Bring a timekeeping device. I don't wear a watch anymore, but you need to make sure that you are accountable and can find the time for yourself. Don't rely on someone else um, to get the time. You need to have something else. I use my cell phone. If you don't have a cell phone, you need to bring a watch. But you have to be accountable for the time. It's super important. Please bring a camera. Bring some stuff to eat because I get hungry on the bus and for the hotel. And then, of course, some money for souvenirs, attractions, and... Um, uh, I'm sorry, that's a mistake in there. Not four fast food meals. I apologize. That did not get any doubt. But bring some extra cash. We'll talk about that. Uh, I shouldn't have to say it, but in case you're packing your own self kiddos, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, hairbrush, or comb, shampoo, hairspray, hair, hair gel, uh, any other thing, anything else that you need. There probably will not be an opportunity for you to visit a convenience store or um, a grocery store to get anything you need. It probably just will not happen. <laughs> Thanks to remember, this is not a luxury tour. You must be flexible um, with delays or changes to the itinerary. There will be times you're sitting on the bus waiting. It's just, it's just the way it is. We, we get a, a lot of privileges by traveling uh, with the tour company, with the tour bus. They drop us right at the front door for a lot of things, but sometimes the restaurant is not ready for 85 people to come through the front door and we have to wait. So as Mr. Lydic alluded to earlier, just be patient. Things will change. The itinerary that's in this packet has already changed a little bit from the time I printed it today. And there will just be minor changes, and we just have to roll with the punches. Everything will work out, but you just have to remember that. Always conduct yourself with the best interests of the group in mind. It's not you by yourself we're traveling as a group. Uh, I, I best learned that when traveling with the K-State Marching Band and myself and 400 other people. Uh, sometimes you don't get to do what you want to do, and you just have to do what the group does, and that's just the way it goes. You have to be flexible. Watch out for each other. When you have time at the mall or other times we're not together as an apartment, all students must stay in groups of four or more. No exceptions. We have some time at the Aubrey Mills Mall and some time to tour Beale Street. You have to be with three other people. No exceptions. If you're not with three other people, you get to spend time with myself, Mr. Littick, or Mrs. English. And we all like to visit the boring museums with the really soft elevator music. Okay? You'll have to stick with us. So if you see somebody that needs a partner, just grab them, take them with you, so we can have fun and nobody gets lost. We don't want anybody hurt, and there's power in numbers. So stay in groups of four, no exceptions. Hey, Mr. Knott, I yeah. would add to that. Nashville is not like one of the largest cities in the United States, but it is a lot bigger than Lindsburg, Kansas. And the way that you behave in Lindsburg, Kansas, people are pretty friendly. For the most part, I think everybody knows everybody. Um, you know, that whole stranger danger thing is in the back of your mind, but you, it's just not on the forefront. Um, when you're traveling in a large group like this, people are going to be able to tell we're not from around here. Um, and so staying in those groups and just being mindful of all those things you learn in kindergarten, you know, don't talk to strangers, all those kinds of things, it's just really, really important. And I think um, I love the innocence of the students here. I love that they don't understand how ugly the world can be, but we have to understand that Nashville is not Lindsburg, Kansas. Nashville, I think, is a fairly safe place. I don't think we're going to have any problems, but we have to remember that we are not in Lindsburg, Kansas anymore. Any sort of problem, call us. Numbers are on the are on the in the front of the packet. Put it in your phone, um, and we'll collect cell phone numbers from you later next week, so we'll have your number as well. But call us for anything, and we'll take care of it. We'll help you. Next couple things, guys and gals, I know it's fun uh, to, to not eat your vegetables, but we don't want to deal with the consequences of you only eating Snickers and um, drinking um, uh, sugary soft drinks and uh, all the massive energy drinks. You don't want to deal with that either. That's a way for us not to use the bathroom on the bus, but please try to eat a hamburger once in a while or eat something green so you stay healthy and you get pretty sick. Um, 
Be courteous. We're close to each other. Carry identification with you at all times. Okay, if you're stopped at the mall, security guard stops you, someone wants to see who you are, you must have your identification with you. Whether it's a student ID, your driver's license, or something, you must have it with you. Memorize the itinerary and be early. Buses, are, buses and rooms are to stay clean. Leave these better than you found it. And if you're unsure about whether you can do an activity or whether an action is allowed, don't do it. Just err on the side of safety. Don't do it. And probably the biggest one, you may not and you will not take your USB 400 uh, laptop with you to Nashville. Now, if you choose to take your own personal laptop and you take your own personal iPad, that's cool. You're responsible for it, but we can't have school-owned laptops on the trip. We can't do it. So please don't bring that. It will not be allowed. You'll have to take it back. Thank you. Uh, next page, loading crew and equipment crew. These are super important as far as moving lots of people at a time. If you're assigned to the loading crew, you're in charge of getting everything off the bus every time we need to get it off the bus. And you're the first ones off, and it makes it easier to move 85 people around. When everything's off the bus, you grab your luggage and you go. Okay, so please help us out. You'll be the first ones off the bus. You'll also be the last ones on the bus because you'll help us get things loaded back on the, uh, underneath the cargo bay. It's not just if you've traveled with it on a bus before, it's not just throw it all on there. Because in addition to your luggage, we're bringing string bases, berry sacks, tubas, and all that equipment with us, and we just can't be thrown on. So loading crew, you're going to work hard, and that's okay for you. A little hard work's always good. Bus captains, you're going to help uh, take attendance on the bus to make sure we're all accountable. Police the area, pass trash bags, and keep it clean. Room captains. You'll see that on the, on the uh, uh, room list at the back of the, uh, the, back, the back of the packet. You're in charge of room keys, making sure everyone keeps the room in an orderly fashion, and making certain that all roommates are awake at the appropriate time, and that everyone makes it to breakfast on time. Attendance at breakfast is required by everyone. Any questions so far? Yeah? Good. The itinerary, Friday, March 13th. Uh, dress for the day, school casual. In fact, you might want to be cozy, cozy. I'll have my pajama pants on, and that's okay. Um, we'll meet in the auditorium right here at 5:30. Bring all of your luggage with you. Meet right in here. You'll have luggage tags to put on your luggage, special identification, so we know that your luggage is ours and doesn't get mixed up with someone else going to Istanbul, and you don't get your luggage back. At 6:30, we'll load the buses, and then 7 o'clock we depart. So it'll be very, very quick, and we'll travel all night, as Mr. Lydic said on Saturday. Um, We'll, last year, last time we went to uh, San Antonio, we stopped at like a rest area, and we were able to freshen up a little bit, and you'll be able to put your music department shirt on, change clothes a little bit, and feel good about yourself. We're eating at Shoney's for breakfast. Woo! I couldn't think of a better place to stop going out for Music City USA than Shoney's. It'll be, it'll be a, a full breakfast, it'll be fantastic. Um, we'll then quickly travel to the RCA Studios and tour the Parthenon. Um, Country Music Hall of Fame at 11 o'clock, and then uh, my personal favorite, and we're going to practice here after a while, Mario Loder's going to demonstrate lunch and line dancing at the Wild Horse Saloon. And, and moms and dads, I promise, the Wild Horse Saloon at noon lunchtime is a little less rowdy than the Wild Horse Saloon at night. So it's going to be a blast. I can't wait. I bought some new cowboy boots, and you wouldn't be surprised to see that there are power cats on them, so it'll be great. My cowboy boots and my skinny jeans. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be fun. <laughs> great. Okay. Uh, 2 o'clock, the Nashville City 